All right. So the, my talk here is scaling the data science mountain. My name is Grant Case. I'm a data anal analytics architect working for DataIQ. We're a five-year startup, uh, originally founded in Paris. Uh, we moved our headquarters here to the United States. And ultimately, our goal as an organization is to enable data science across all the organization and across all end users. So the, for the past five years, I've worked in and around this space. I have come to know about 150 different companies, all at different points of their data science maturity. So there exists a point in the maturity of every company, where, company's life where the need to scale da the data science mountain becomes paramount. And when I say scaling the data science mountain, I'm talking about increasing the number and complexity of projects. Most data science that starts out in an organization starts in a very siloed two or three or four or five different data scientists starting out doing a number of different projects. But the organization seeing that value decides, you know what, how can we increase that? How can we leverage it? How can we put more into the funnel and get more out of it? So how do we do that? So three traditional ways we can scale data science in an organization. Well, the first one, we can add full stack engineers, AKA the unicorn data scientists. So the unicorn data scientists know R and Python really, really well. They're not necessarily SAS, Stata or MATLAB or eViews. These folks are coming into organizations with the concepts in and around open source and how they're addressing it. They know web services, they know containers, they know Kubernetes, they know how to Kinesis, S3, all the different services that are being used inside of analytics today. They're com comfortable with that. So they also have to be understand Spark and Scala and Hadoop, MapReduce. They probably know a little bit of Java. They know visualization technologies such as D3. They're familiar with Git. They know statistics because, quite frankly, everything we're talking about in data science has its root in statistics. If you don't know statistics, get out. You know, you're just a coder. You know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when we're applying data science, we got to know what we're talking about. They understand optimization, and they understand some of the forecasting. They have to understand the business problems like churn and upsell and fraud. You know, they have to understand the domains of both the data, the business, and the technology associated with it. And they're amazingly expensive, if by chance you can find them. High turnover right now. Uh, roughly about 50% of the data scientists who are in their position right now le have left their previous job in the last two years. If you can find them, if you can find them in New York and San Francisco, they're amazingly difficult to hang on to. Or in the case of one uh, individual customer that I've worked with in the past, they stood up an entire data lab of data scientists. Two years later, they shut that lab down. They couldn't get the people in. So what else can we do? We can add new processes. Processes is good, right? Processes increase the speed at which we can get and reproduce projects. We can do things like crisp DM. We can add other projects. Most of these, and you even, if you were in some of the SageMakers earlier, so if we look at the SageMaker uh, presentation earlier, they're talking about the data science as well. So we can invest in new technologies. That's always good. Let's upsize it. So I like to pick on deep learning because deep learning is the very hot stuff right now. So how can we do that? Well, we can add things like TensorFlow, Keras, MXNet, CAFE2, CNTK. NVIDIA, NVIDIA CUDA, we're actually doing, at DataIQ, we're actually working with a customer right now on an NVIDIA CUDA uh, implementation. You know, we can learn PyTorch, Deep Learning 4J, and also, let's add those Docker and Kubernetes in there as well. Oh, by the way, that's not even necessarily the technologies that are most prevalent or increasing in use. A lot of them are, but what does all this mean? It means it's very difficult for your organization to just leverage a technology or add new people or add new processes to get to an answer. So let's stop. Let's stop right here. If we're trying to scale data science, how are we going to do that? So I'm an older guy. I actually have been around 
the block a few times. Anybody remember the late 90s, early 2000s at all? Yep. You couldn't throw a rock without hitting a webmaster, right? Looking for webmaster. I need a webmaster, right? What was the webmaster? The webmaster was the person who was responsible for all of the content, all of the keeping the server up, going around, coding. They were responsible for everything. What happened? Well, we started to specialize. We started to split. When we saw this in the mid-2000s, and it's happening today, we had web development. Web development became speed to market. How do I create unique solutions? And when we're talking about frameworks and data science, that becomes one of the most important things we do. Create unique solutions to drive value. Well, I'm here to tell you what's the flip side of that. The one that people, it's not as interesting, but becomes very much prevalent when we're talking about data science, and that's content management systems. The webmaster went away, but how did all that content get updated on Amazon.com? Maybe by machine learning, but what if we went out to websites like Unilever and other products? You've got a person in the middle. Even at, earlier, uh, the, I think it was Buckle or Basil, uh, came up and they were talking about their content management system. Those folks aren't coders, but they're responsible for content. So let's talk about the analog. What is it today? It's the data scientist. The data scientist is responsible for everything. They're responsible for the connecting to the database, doing the data preparation, modeling that stuff, and then ultimately getting it into production. And what's starting to happen right now? We're starting to split those jobs. We see data science developers. These are the folks that are going down into Cafe and Keras and MXNet, and they're, doing, they're building new algorithms. They're doing hyperparameter tuning. But what we don't have and what we need to work on is that data science content system. Not everybody knows how to code. Not everybody can use an application. So we need to create those content that content management system for data science. Unlike the above, and it was different for the web, what we have right now is we cannot move past this. We can't divorce these two because data insists that both of these personas become together and remain in proximity. So what I'm here to tell you is how do we put a framework for change management or scaling data science? Now, this is a very uh, older uh, framework, people, process, and technology and change management. But it has as much applicability to data science today. So the first thing is, what can we do? Well, if we're not just adding more people or more technology, we want to get into those intersections. So if we have people in process, we can scale through diversity. We can bring more people into the, the process. We can scale through sophistication. We can add new technologies to the stack in order to make it work. And we can scale through automation, which by, by God, Amazon's the best at it in terms of helping us automate everything that's going on. Now, how do we proceed? How does our strategy dictate how we proceed? Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is a two box or four box question. Is it my data specific or is it general? So is it the data specific to my business or my domain, or is it broadly general across the organization? And are the problems specific and, or general across the organization? And that dictates how we're going to implement. So the first one is completely custom. Data specific, I can get high likelihood of a competitive advantage. Platforms, which we'll talk a lot about here. Data is specific, but problems can be both specific and general. And then pre-built libraries, packages, and solutions. This is like AWS recognition and all of the, you know, transcribe, all of the services that I can call out to data science. Now, where do we get in trouble, right? If we overshoot or undershoot the complexity associated with a complete custom, that's where we fall down. Because if it's over complex, we, don't, we can't deal with it. If it's under complex, why did we go down this process? I see a lot of companies that have built entire libraries to do things like connecting to databases. That's overemphasizing the mundane, 
right? That should be taken care of. If you're doing that, you're basically wasting time. And we don't have time to waste right now when it comes to data science. If we, on the platform, if we miss the competitive advantage or build something that was available off the shelf, you know what? That platform wasn't the right way to proceed. And then when it comes to libraries, if we didn't take into account our data, if the project, the problem we're dealing with is too, too specific in our process, well, we failed here. This is why things like, you see recognition, you see things like figuring out data or sales processes, those work fantastic as actual processes and services. They fail when they come out of that, anything beyond that. And what it, technology, these fo fine folks that are treating us here today, they're pushing all of this down. They're pushing this more to services, but the data slows that progress. Not everything can be pushed to that pre-built library. So how do we scale? We scale first through sophistication. So how do we keep the talent happy? Well, the first one we do is we keep it open. So everything we're doing right now is, as an organization at Dataiku, we're investing in integrating open source technologies, Python, R, Scala, TensorFlow, open formats. Why? because it ultimately creates optionality for you. If things get better or worse later on, you always have the ability to pull the ripcord when you have options with open source. Look for extensibility. Not everybody can do everything. Not, not even Amazon can do everything. So you need to give yourself, again, more options going forward. So, because not everybody can keep up. Your people are many VCs. How many developers here? How many, yeah? Do you like to play with new tech? Yes. We're all, if we're a developer, we're typically not new tech. You need to enable those folks to have, make them mini VCs. Find those techs that are most important, that they're interested in, and get it involved inside the organization. Integration is not sophistication. If I harp on one thing, overemphasizing the mundane while very valuable to the organization at the beginning will ultimately be consumed later on by other technologies. And then think elastic, EC2 instances, serverless technology. We are living at a very interesting time right now of we can actually add on and use these things and do it on a dollar or a cent basis. So I've got an RX4 too large right now running for my students at Columbia. So I, I teach on the, on the backside. Uh, in the Applied Analytics program. We, uh, that's an eight core, 60 gig uh, instance that they get to play with. I couldn't have done that four years ago. Scale through diversity. We need to add more people and they need to specialize. First thing, we need horizontal and vertical collaboration. And when I say horizontal and vertical collaboration, I'm talking about analysts can't just talk to, to each other Developers can't just talk to each other. When we're talking about data science, it's an entire pipeline. It goes from the data engineer, to the modeler, to the DevOps, to the analyst. They all have to be a part of this. Add collaboration tooling. A code notebook is fantastic. Writing R Markdown is fantastic, but that is not collaboration. When we're adding all of this together, we have to comment. We have to add all of that as a part of this. Invite all the personas. Data science is a team sport. Everybody has to be on the field. That means everyone, if you're not inviting business users, if you're not inviting analysts, if everybody, if the only way you can do data science in your organization is through a code notebook, well, you got problems because there's a bunch of business domain knowledge sitting, hanging around the organization that you're not leveraging at this point. Scale through automation. So, anybody use Airbnb? Anybody? A couple of folks. They actually have one of the best data science organizations in the world, in my opinion. You know, they do a ton of work. They put out a ton of blogs, blog posts. Most of this, I have, you, I take a lot of this from them because they talk about the first thing. The first thing when we're automating, we gotta find it. If data or technologies or code is sitting in some place where it can't be found, guess what? We need to be able to find it. 
you need to be able to add things like GitHub, Bitbucket, Alation, Apache Atlas to go out and find that information. Second, we got to be able to view it. That means visualization built in, whether that's D3, your own charting, quick site, don't care, right? You have to be able to put all of this together. We need to be able to reproduce it. So it does not help if something was just built, it sits someplace, somebody comes and runs it again, and it gives us the different results. That's not good. As a data scientist, that's really bad for me. Because previously in a former life, I was at working at Citigroup. And when you're in the financial services industry, regulators like to see the same thing run over and over the same exact way. Or they have questions. Schedule it. We got to be able to schedule it. It's got to run on some sort of uh, time because ultimately this is part of automation. You know, what I haven't found a data scientist yet that wants to keep up and make sure that this, this uh, code that they built runs every month, week, year. And then we got to be able to deploy it. So that's got to be coming back to RESTful APIs, making it easy so that analysis can be done. Now, Sales pitch incoming. My for I am an analytics architect. That means I'm sales here. So, you know, why do we, where do we come from in Data IQ? We look at this as a holy component. We look at this as everything as a platform. When you're data science, everything has to go end to end. All the collaboration has to be there. Part of that is being able to orchestrate these things in a visual way so the project managers and analysts can look at things, being able to prepare those data sets in a way that data engineers can write either code, send it to MapReduce, send it to Spark, it doesn't matter, deploy it into Kubernetes, into wherever, and then collaborate in and around it. Again, when it comes to all of this, it also has to run where you are. So that's where we come in with AWS integration on the marketplace, you can one click and off you go. And a little bit about our company. We've had about 300% increase in revenue growth over the le since 2017. We have 125 users and a, our 125 customers across all different uh, industries in case. And then 160 employees now. Uh, when I started, we were about 130 and that was four months ago. I say that because what's happening right now in the data science arena, the one you're in right here, is incredibly interesting. I, I said about two years ago, we were about in the third inning, we're in about the fifth inning right now. We're starting to see a lot of scale. The sort of organizations I'm working with right now, it used to be I was modeling on gigs of data. Our largest customers are now doing it on low single terabyte, or sorry, high single terabyte, low double digit terabyte range in terms of building models. And that's the last key. Everything you have to do has to be scalable. Implementing a lot of these things, a lot of these concepts, using platforms like AWS to do that will get you there. So, my final thoughts. The same techniques you use to manage change are exactly the ones we're going to directly apply to data science. Things are changing quickly. I mean, I don't even know how many, uh, I can't even keep up with the deep learning stuff. I was reading about recurrent neural networks, and now there's even new, there's newer stuff coming online. Keep yourself up. Life in data science come at, comes at you fast. Be ready to change with it. Everything that's happening right now. There's, in six months, it will all be different. Make sure you're creating options for yourself as a data science team. Make sure you're leaving yourself an opening to go someplace if you need to. Data science is a team sport. Everybody has to be involved. If you're coding alone, the, nobody codes alone in web development anymore. Data science, that's still happening at this point. Two years from now, that won't be the case. You just won't be able to build these data science workflows alone. And then finally, as data scientists, you know, we're typically developers. You know, that means we don't want to, we need to automate, farm out, and get the treasury out. You know, try to specialize. The data scientists you hire 
ultimately have to have domain knowledge, and if they know the machine learning, they're going to be happiest in what they do. That bears out in a lot of what's happening and a lot of the surveys that are happening at this point. So go forth, scale your data science. My name is Grant Case, thank you. Let's have some questions.